Well, Dero, you had a front row seat for what was in a yeah. thrilling, thrilling game. The stadium was packed. It was outcast night. Big boy was there. <laughs> uh, there was a lot going on. But, man, you could, you could feel the, like I told Ron, it had that big game feel right from the start. Yeah, no question about it. And, and so much to digest in this game. And, listen, I've lived in Atlanta half of my life now. So I got a, a nice feel for the Atlanta Braves and what they're trying to do and the fans when you go grab something to eat. And there was a little panic early about Austin Riley. He, out of all the contracts Alex Anthopoulos has given out, the biggest one was to Austin Riley, mm -hmm. 10 years, $212 million. And he got off to a slow start, and there was whispers like, hey, he's got to get it going. Well, he's gotten it going. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into this little details tape right here. I'm going to take you inside this game. He is heating up in a big way. His last eight games, 12 for 30, a 400 batting average, seven extra base hits, six RBIs, an OPS that's approaching 1,200. And it all started against the Dodgers, just roasting doubles all over the lot. A Bobby Miller 0-2 heater in the first, I think got him really going, okay? He came in in 2021 and talked about what he's trying to accomplish at the plate. Take a listen to this. I'm hunting middle of the zone. Um, and I'm hunting a win I'm basically hunting a window, and it, it, it came out of that window, and you know, I, I, obviously I saw I saw spin there, um, and was able in that kind of that. So you're hunting lower lower third yeah, of the zone, right there. Well, against Aaron Nola, the window is wide open. <laughs> this is a bay window, okay? Yeah. Because he is 20 for 45 wow. in his career with 10 extra base hits, five home runs, and right here, Jacob Bader, Brendan Werner, back in craft and edit, killing it with the window pane right there. Little cutter that doesn't get to the outside part of the plate. Aaron Nola grinded. He did not have his good stuff. Neither did Dylan Dodd, but they were grinding to give them six innings and kind of save the bullpen a little bit. This ball was absolutely destroyed to the biggest part of the Ooh. field. Just a huge man, staying tall, chest stays tall but also Ron the defense was on point the two nights I was there mm. I mean when he came up to the big leagues it was all back get him in the lineup this play we'll put here. him in the outfield this play here how many guys actually take that to home plate and Sean Murphy credit to you step on the bag we got a tag at the plate Normally, that plays to first base. So, Austin Riley was unbelievable the two nights I got to see him. The Harper impact. This team is scuffled in May offensively. 24th in OPS going into last night. Let's dive into the impact he has. Bryce Harper just being back in this lineup. Take a look. Dylan Dodd hangs a little breaking ball right there. He takes it to the chop house. After his first A-B, just shooting something through the left side where the shortstop was. They had Orlando R.C. is shaded right behind second base. And then what does he do? I just hit one 430 feet. Oh, you're going to shift me towards shortstop right there, Austin Riley? Okay, I'll take my bunt knock. I want on base a little two-out lightning right there. I can't tell you, look, talking to the guys and Rob Thompson, what it means for him to be back, his aggressive nature. Michael Harris, you're going to Cadillac after a ball right there? I'm going to take third base on you. And I think that led to potentially Michael Harris plus his struggles getting pinch hit for in the ninth. We'll get into that in a min minute too. But I wanted to show him taking ground balls at first base. Talking to him yesterday as he was walking off the field, he feels like he could certainly handle first base. And the impact and the loss of Reese Hoskins is real for this Philadelphia Phillies team. They miss him mightily. Just his pass the baton mentality, the way he worked walks. And being at the game, there's certain decisions when you're looking at it and then coming off the WBC with the managerial stuff, that's how I'm watching the game. I just want to take you inside a few decisions and some plays that I thought were interesting last night. Let's get it rolling White, right here. Ronald Acuna, 5-4 game. You know Nick Castellanos is getting sent to home right here. You have the double cut set up to home with Ozzie Albies and Matt Olson. Thank the Lord Orlando Arcia mm. was on top of it right here because you're going home, home, home. The fact that he throws this ball to second base confused the heck out of me. Mm. I don't know if he was trying to steal it, back pick him, what he was trying to do, but a great play by Orlando Arcia. Pause this real quick. 
Can you bring that to the, the aerial shot of the field? Yeah, okay. Look at the bug, 5-5, five, five, bottom eight. Michael Harris, scuffling, bad. Batting in the nine slot. But this is a chance where, as a manager, Brian Snicker says, do I try and play psychologist and give Michael Harris the AB and try and get him going? Or do I pinch hit for the NL Rookie of the Year last year with Travis Starno and play the game of baseball? I thought this was a tough decision. Once he pinch hit for Travis Starno, I thought the middle infield was gonna go back and play double play depth. They didn't. They stayed infield in. There was so much wrapped up in this one play but it ends up working, right? You take care, run it. You take care of the actual team and you don't worry about one guy. Look at Michael Harris, he kind of knew. And it presented, I think it's all playing into the lax play defensively, the ABs. He's really, really beating himself up. You can tell he's in his own head. Snicker got him out of there right there. And Travis Darno ends up getting a huge, huge knock to kind of seal that deal for the Braves. Mm -hmm. Highest average arm strength. Maybe this is why he went to second base. You got Brian Anderson, 97 miles an hour. Ronald Acuna Jr., 96.5. But I thought the interesting moment in that game for me was, do you let Michael Harris hit in that situation and try and get his season going? Or do you do the right baseball move? and pitch hit Darno and Snicker pulled off the right move. Uh, d -Row, that that is a, a great way to educate what happened last night. It's like having, uh, of course, a manager in the booth. Um, the, your inner clock, if you're Acuna first, the first play, your inner clock tells you that Schwarber has a double. Yeah. There's no way you're going to yep. get him out of second base, so your play should be home. And you're right, d -Row, that Arcia was so intelligent enough, and, and people aren't talking about what Arcia has done. Everyone wrote him off. Vaughn Grissom was going to be the shortstop right. out of spring training. He's had an incredible year. And then the final play is that the, the night I did the game, Dodgers against the Braves, Snicker gave Michael Harris a day off, like a mental day off to kind of chill. And here he is now pinch hitting for him. That's a play that doesn't go well individually. But, you know, your manager, you're doing it for the team. Your decision is always how do I win the game best? How do I put my team in the best place to win this game? And he did it with Darnell.